Our FDOT Geotech Borehole Tool is located on the FDOT ribbon. Here I'm in Civil 3D 2015. You can be in a Topo RD01 file or the RDXS RD01 file. A few things to keep in mind when running this borehole tool is you must have a Civil 3D surface, your existing ground surface in your active file along with your alignment baseline survey that was used to locate the borings out in the field by the surveyors and you also must have your roadway cross sections existing cross sections in this file also because the borehole tool will run your borehole symbols in both plan view and cross section view but you must have the three aforementioned files in your current working file I'll zoom in to demonstrate this I have my existing ground surface surface EG in this file I also have my baseline survey alignment used to locate the borings in this file I have my existing cross sections that I've cut in this file I have the existing cross sections with the underground utilities currently displayed in this file to start the program borehole tool I have my civil 3d home ribbon over in the top right we have our FDOT button click on the button this will pull up the FDOT ribbon over on the far right next to the links and contacts and your help you have your FDOT geotech borehole tool if you hover over it it will give you information about the tool hit F1 and it'll pull up additional information what the tool does to start the program just click on the borehole button it pulls up your FDOT borehole generator version 2015.0.2.5 this is your latest version you may have an old version dot one dot one if so you need your you need our latest maintenance release two to uh, install this uh, latest version you'll notice you can up top you can either use a comma separated file ASCII input or an Excel file input you'll notice if you use an Excel file you just have one input file if you have a comma separated value you have two input files I prefer the comma separated value because it it separates the borehole location information and your material information so it's easier to manipulate anyone familiar with Excel knows you can save an Excel file out to a CSV file before I uh, bring those up you have three more data fields here a borehole alignment that's your alignment that was used to uh, locate the boreholes mainly uh, your baseline survey which I have here my baseline survey state row 50 your view alignment that that the alignment your view is based on I have plenty of alignments but I'm using my baseline survey state row 50 for both the view alignment and borehole alignment the surface is the next one I only have one surface my existing ground surface I showed you that I have attached next field is your projection rules the first one is project bore borehole symbols into cross-section views that's self-explanatory if I have it toggled on it's going to put my uh, soil boring boxes in the cross-sections 
if I have it toggled off and I just want to run it in the plan view it'll just ignore the cross-section views so I'll toggle that on the next one is show boring information in sections that's the I'll demonstrate that when I run them in uh, that's that's the text the labels if you don't want the labels just the boxes you can toggle that off but I'll keep that toggled on the next one confuses some people uh, you have a by percentage and a by distance you can you can place the uh, boreholes a certain distance from the sections if you use by distance by percentage I like to use by percentage because I'll keep my percentages at 50 percent that means it'll put it on the nearest uh, even station because the sections the sample lines are at even stations like plus zero zero plus fifty whatever uh, so if I have it at fifty percent it'll place it on the nearest station it, that it's within fifty percent of if that makes sense the next one is place borehole symbols in plan view that's just like the cross-section view if you if you just want it in cross sections you can toggle that off toggle it on I have it all toggled on so it'll run in my cross sections and plan view next we'll go back up and uh, pull up the ASCII data files I'll click on the data field you'll notice my input file is boreholes uh, called boreholes the extension is BRH the boreholes can be called that the name can be called anything but keep in mind it must have an have an extension of BRH for this uh, tool to run so I, I usually just call it boreholes BRH you'll uh, open that you'll fill it out hit the material file name same as the boreholes I call this materials MTL the materials can be named anything the MTL must have an MTL extension at the end so I'll open that everything's filled out so it's ready to run so I'll go down to the bottom hit place borings it takes a few minutes to run so let me jump over to uh, to a couple of things here to show you this here is is the borehole input file the headers are up top they're they're self-explanatory uh, borehole name is the name of my boreholes the chain is my baseline survey I'm using baseline survey state row 50 the stationing that the boreholes were taken at they're they're not at even stations like 930 plus 2798 929 plus 2342 wherever the geotech firm created the boreholes the soil borings got the description I usually use the station that they were taken at for the description offset depth the depth is uh, is set at 10 here because they went 10 foot down they they that's the deepest they went for these borings so you, you need to have your lowest elevation for this depth get your water elevation they're all at zero zero right now there may be an elevation if they encountered water which the symbol for water is the numeric symbol of five it'll put it put the water symbol in notice G and E there's a, a lot of G and E's that means groundwater not encountered and they have the date that it was taken which will be labeled as part of the description at the end they had some seasonal high waters so they have the numeric six for the seasonal high which is the value for the seasonal high water symbol they have the abbreviation SHW for the label and the date that it was that it was found that's a ASCII uh, input file 
that you would use. The next one is the materials file. This is the soul boring names. The material one, three, two, one. There's a lot of numeric values. I'll explain that briefly in a minute. Those, those, those are the strata data, the soil data, which uh, it, it refers to the soil survey sheet that the geotech will provide. DOC is for depth of cover, and that's the numeric values for the depth of cover. They went down 10 feet and only, and only encountered one soil, so there's only one borehole name. In this, there may be both multiple names when they encountered more than one soil type. So, like like uh, AB12, it has three because they encountered three different soil types. They went down one foot from the existing ground. These are depth of cover, not elevations. They're 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 the numeric footage down from the existing ground. They went down one foot, encountered the first soil type of three. They went down 4.5 feet for soil type two, and they went down to 10 feet for the soil type one. <clears throat> this is your materials.mtl ASCII input file. Okay, you notice process complete. So I'll hit OK. And we'll go down to our plan views for State Road 50, and you notice it dropped in the the boring symbols here. That's the names, the the sole boring symbol. They they got a lot of them on this project, about every 50 feet. But as you'll notice, if you look at your sample lines, these green lines, they're not on even stations. That's why you need to have the description in your list your station as your description in your label also and I'll, I'll show you that in a minute the nice thing about this is <clears throat> this tool isn't dynamic so if you have changes you need to be be made you'll change your input files and you'll have to rerun this so it's nice that these are dropped in as data fields because I can click on one and it'll grab them all and I can I can delete them all at once so I can rerun them okay I'll jump down to my cross sections you'll notice it random in cross sections there's the labels the the soul boring name there's the station they were taken at 932.06.04 5995 left G and E like I mentioned groundwater not encountered and the date it was taken you'll notice it doesn't hit on the existing ground. Don't be worried about that. The reason for that is, of course, the station for the cross section is 932 plus 00, but the boring was taken at 932 plus 06.04, so the existing grounds don't match at the two locations. So it's nothing to be concerned about. You'll notice it just ran it throughout the project labels and that's the strata index numbers that I'll explain in a minute one and three there's some seasonal high waters they dropped in where they encountered seasonal high waters but just like the <clears throat> plan view I can click on that on the on a boring and it uh it grabs them all because it's a data field also and I can delete them all at once if I need to rerun it. A couple of things I wanted to mention before closing is <clears throat> let me pull up my uh, there's a soils and foundation handbook which is which is your main guide for uh, geotech work. I pulled up the DOT website here real quick this is in structures design, so it's www.dot.state.fl.us forward slash structures. You'll find the structures manual here. You can download it to your desktop or just view it online. Structures manual. 
there's a there's your cover page I'll go down to the index 6 into publications <clears throat> and FDOT publications they have a lot of the PPMs, drainage manuals, CAD manuals but number 8 at the bottom is the Soil Foundations Handbook you want to pull this up this is where you'll find a lot of your information there's 216 pages it's good to read through this and get familiar with this um, study this if you do a lot of geotech work I'll go down to page 115 here real quick uh, this is chapter 9 presentation of geotechnical information this pertains most of your information you need to know for uh, doing the geotech work in CAD in for your plans <clears throat> so I'll drop down here just wanted to show you those strata index numbers it's got a lot of examples here for for work that's your uh, this is your roadway soil survey sheet. This will go into your plan set. This is provided by the geotech doing the soil borings. And that's your strata numbers that you that that will go into your um, soil boring boxes. One, two, they have five on this project here. And there's a description of the type of soils they encountered. So you'll refer to this sheet for your soil boring boxes. I just wanted to point that out. And it's... Uh, found in the Soils and Foundation Handbook. I'll go back to my file and that's uh, pretty much all I have. It's, it's, it's a nice little tool, self-explanatory, very easy to use. It's found in the borehole tools found on the FDOT ribbon.